Hey, good day, everyone. David DeHaas, Living Waters, livingwaterscleanse.com. Uh, today's broadcast is brought to you by Living Waters. <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to talk about probiotics today and when probiotics are a waste of money. So it's become a pretty well recognized uh, that you sh most people need probiotics due to taking antibiotics. Uh, due to the in a healthy gut system, but we're going to talk about when you need to look at your basically throwing money away. Okay, and we're talking about why that is the case. So first of all, I think we want to look at let's just talk generally some probiotic sources that you probably want to stay away from. When I got East Candida years ago, you know, it was record. This is back in the '90s, and there wasn't much out about probiotics at that time. And finding a good quality probiotics was somewhat difficult because there was very few people making a good probiotic back then. There were a few, but it was tough to find. You couldn't go to the grocery store. So someone said, David, get raw yogurt. Well, the problem with eating raw yogurt, it's been pasteurized. When you pasteurize something, it's been cooked. So they cook all of the bacteria out. That's why they do pasteurization. So there's no possibility of you getting any uh, germs, picking up any bacteria from, from, the, pro from the yogurt. So not only that, but yogurt is very mucousy. If you're one that has asthma, you are going to want to avoid yogurt. You're going to want to avoid all dairy products, cheeses as well. Now, when I first started doing this, I loved cheese. I had a big addiction for cheese. And maybe I should say that my body had the addiction because my mind was saying, I don't want to eat cheese anymore. But man, the body was saying, but come on, David, we're creating chemicals down here that we really like. We want to keep those chemicals going. So uh, it's very difficult to get off of these foods that are harmful for us when we have these addictions. And we're going to talk about how we reverse that in a minute. So let's just stay away from yogurt. Just forget about it. It's a waste of money. Just stay away from yogurt. Most of them on the market, you go on the shelf. I don't care if it's Shabani or whoever. Uh, it's There's a lot of sugar in these things. Some of them have sugars or sweeteners that are actually dangerous and harmful for you. So I would not be giving my kids probiotics. And if your kids are on inhalers, no dairy products. Absolutely none, not a niche. Now, some of you are like, oh, my God, what about calcium? I need my calcium. You're not going to get it from the cow, okay? Let's just make that. It's just really not... The dairy industry is a great job of marketing. Bless them up, man. They've done a great job to, to promote their industry. And, hey, I grew up milking two dairy cows, right? I drank a gallon of milk every day, nearly every day, with Nestle's chocolate. Remember Nestle's chocolate? God, no wonder I got sick. So I was drinking a lot of milk, and I had severe asthma. But, you know, no one told me any better. No one knew what was better. I mean, what any difference. So, Okay, so let's look at the source of probiotics. So most of the stuff you're going to buy off the store shelf, quite frankly, is probably not going to be up to a standard to pass the stomach acids. So you think about that. I'm going to bring on a screen here to broadcast. So we think about our, how our digestive system works and make that a little bit smaller. Can we do that? There we go. Okay, so we've got to get stuff through the, through the stomach. Let me find my slide. The good old stomach slide. Okay. Give you a little anatomy lesson today. Okay, so when we eat food, okay, it goes through esophagus down into the stomach. So the stomach now, when the stomach's working properly, it's going to create acids. So for those of you who are taking some kind of anti-acid because you have acid reflux, that is not actually helping you at all. Uh, we want to create more acids. So I'm going to tell you a little trick to get off antacids. First of all, let this mouth be your blender and chew, 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 because it's the right thing to do. Chew, 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 because it's the right thing to do. All right? You should let this be your masticating blender. It should be your first blender always. Chew it until it's juice. Now it goes in the stomach, and the stomach doesn't kick up quite as many stomach acids. Now, if you're over age 40, as we age, the amount of acids that our body produces is less and less. So it's really good to be taking a digestive formula that is known to help increase the stomach to produce acids. And when, when you do that, if you chew, you're going to uh, actually 
aid in digestion, and that's going to go into your duodenum. And in here, we want to have good growth of the good bacteria to the bad bacteria. You're always going to have the bad stuff, but you want to have the good ratio. So most of us have been told to add probiotics. Well, we've got to get those probiotics past these digestive acids. And many of them are incapable of doing that. So you want to look to a formula. And if you need help with that, we've got them in our office, of course. Uh, and now <clears throat> we get the probiotics into here. Now you can get probiotics from foods. You can get them from kefirs. You can get them from sauerkraut and kimchi. Those are fermented foods. Now, if you already have a high amount of yeast candida uh, currently, it's probably not timely for you to add a bunch of these fermented foods like kombucha and so forth because we you've got to get this back into balance. Now, there are tools, I'm not going to go into it on this broadcast, to help get that back into balance. But the other thing you must certainly do, and you probably see this coming, but your gut, because of stress and emotions, is twisted and distorted like this. All right? You've heard that gut feeling. We store all the stuff here. And when we clamp down and clench, we really mess this up. Well, the average person, get this, the average person's packing 12 to 15 pounds of poop. Okay, so this is, if it's fats, it's getting rancid, uh, it's fermenting, and it's destroying the good bacteria. So what should we do first? Well, we want to get into the system, and we want to start cleaning this out because this is going to harbor, like I say, 12 to 15 pounds. And you see this muscle here? This person right here is going to very shortly need an appendix removed or possibly their liver gallbladder because this is uh, just a disaster. This can build up a significant amount of old waste matter, especially parasites. So what's the easiest way to clean this out? It's doing colon hydrotherapy. Really simple to do. If you haven't done colon hydrotherapy, you want to know more about that, I'm going to put a link down in the uh, below here. You can go to our webinar, which is on our website at livingwaterscleanse.com. I go into great detail in all of this. And it's something you and your kids should watch so you really understand how the gut works. But, you know, obviously, you know, uh, when we do colon therapy, we're infusing water into your colon. You're on a specially made bed. And the water is going to go in. It's going to trickle in here. It's going to start or hydrating and dissolving the old stuff. And it's going to start basically creating peristalsis. So this muscle wants to push back like this. Well, if it's bloated like you see here on this screen here, or if it's like this, that muscle's not doing this. Things are just backing up and then eventually, foop, you have a great big bowel movement. This person might be going to the bathroom once every three days, maybe once a week, and that is not healthy. So not only that, but guess what's destroying, guys? It's destroying your good bacteria. It's destroying your probiotics. So throwing probiotics at this at this time is... A little like uh, going out to plow. Let's just say it's snowed in Boise 12 inches on the highway, and you go out with a little shovel, okay? You're not going to really make a dent into it and really get this balance back to get the good probiotics to the, to the bad bacteria back into balance. So let's clean this out. Let's hydrate it, clean it out. And now when you put your probiotics, it properly get through your digestive acids into the gut, it's going to actually do some good. So that's what we want to look at. So if you want to know more about how we can help you on this, you can call the office. You can get a free consult on the phone or here in person in the office. If you're long distance, uh, you can give us a call and set up a time to talk on the phone and to see if this is something that we can help you with or not. Either way. So that's it. So first of all, you need a good quality probiotic. Second of all, putting it into a dirty system is somewhat counterintuitive. And do not eat dairy products. All right? because that is just a waste of money. So, um, how do I switch this back? Oh, here we go. So, if you like this stuff, if you like what we've been sharing with you, give us a like, uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, make a comment down below, tell us where you're from if you're not here in Boise, Idaho, or, or Boise, I'd love to know where everyone's at. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below, we'll try and get to them as soon as we can. Meanwhile, I'm David DeHaas at Living Waters Clinch. You make it a blessed day.